Welcome, Maman, and uh, a very Merry Christmas to you. Uh, it must be a little merrier because you finally scored a 7.30 on the GMAT. Oh, definitely. Yeah, it has been a long time coming, and yeah, I'm really happy that I was able to do it. Perfect. And it's it's actually been a very, very interesting journey, right? Uh, three or six months, four different attempts, 600 to 650 to 690 to then finally 730. And, and your verbal mm-hmm. scores improved by 15 points from V27 to V44. Yes. Phenomenal. It Take has. me through your journey, man. Yeah. So I started preparing for the GMAT first time back in 2018. Mm. And I signed up for an in-person coaching class. However, the teaching methodology just did not work for me. There was no personalization. I was Mm. not able to revisit the concepts that I was weak in. Everyone ended up doing the same thing. And that transformed into my practice after the coaching classes ended as well. I was focusing on each and everything. There was no targeted practice. Mm. And I was not confident at all, but I had to give an attempt because I had applied to the YLP program at ISP and I needed to take the GMAT to apply to the second stage. And I ended up scoring a 600 with a Q47 and a V27, Okay, which was quite a shocker for me because I never thought that I was so weak in verbal. Mm. I was doing decently in mocks. I was scoring in the range of 680 to 700. Yeah. Okay. So okay. after the first attempt, I took a break and I started preparing for my second attempt two years down the line. Okay. And I sort of did not change my approach at all. I just revised the concepts that I had gone through during the first attempt. I did not change my approach at all. I studied for two months and ended up scoring a 650 again. A dec- uh, it, It's not that bad a score, but it's like not a great score to get into good business schools in the yeah. world. So I got a Q47 and V33. There was definitely some improvement in verbal, but I knew that there was something not right with the approach especially mm. in the SC and RC questions. These were two of my weakest components in the verbal section. Mm. So after that, I realized that I need to sign up for a course. It's not something that's going to happen by itself. Right. Uh, I came across eGMAT on GMAT Club. The verbal reviews are tremendous. Mm. And I signed up for the free trial. I got some access to some modules and I realized that I had already learned so much in hmm. those three modules so it was a no-brainer for me to sign up for the course i signed up for the course and yeah it did wonders for me yeah that it did that it definitely did now i want to touch upon a few points that you mentioned so you mentioned targeted approach and personalization were missing from uh, that that coaching institute right when you say these two words I, I want you to explain it a little better as well what were you expecting as a student Okay, so targeted practice was basically about uh, reviewing my weak spots, finding what my weak spots are, and then working towards improving those particular areas, because that's going to bring a huge amount of improvement in your score. Hmm. And uh, I, I was not even aware about the weak spots in my preparation. That's the worst part. Hmm. Because there was no personalization, everyone was going through the same thing. We ended up having the same sort of practice sets, we ended up doing the same sort of questions, which is not something that is usually the most appropriate approach, especially in an exam like GMAT. Hmm. And I wanted to improve on my weak areas like SC and RC. Hmm. However, I did not have the means to do that. I was Hmm. clueless as to how to go about it, what topics to practice, what topics Hmm. not to practice. So I was looking for something like that. And that's where the eGMAT platform came from. Uh, First is the personalized study plan that it provides at the beginning. Hmm. And if you stick to the plan, uh, it's gonna, and the Scholaranium, it actually tells you about all your strengths and weaknesses. And that's that's what's something that was missing in my first few attempts. Good. I think that makes a lot of sense. So you basically took something that was missing from your first, first and second attempt. And then you look for a course that kind of fit that bill for you. Which yeah. makes a lot of sense. Now, I want to talk a little bit about, um, firstly, how did you get to know that you were weak in SC and RC? Because at that point in time, you didn't know, but you still, you figured that out. And then what changed after EGMAT? Okay. So I ordered the ESR after my second attempt. I scored the 88th percentile in CR, which was mm-hmm. my strong point, but I was stuck at 53 and 57 respectively in SC and RC. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. So that actually told me about the weak areas and the weak areas that I had to work, especially on SC, hmm. uh, because SC is something that I knew I could do well. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to sign up for a verbal course first, but then I ended up signing for the whole course of EGMAT hmm. because I had read some amazing reviews on EG, uh, GMAT Club. Got it. So, and the verbal course is so structured. I mean, you first start with master comprehension. It actually told me about the key reading strategies, and these reading strategies drove my improvement in RC. I actually ended up improving from a fifty percent accuracy at the beginning to the eighty percent accuracy by the time I finished the RC module. Hmm. And with the SC course, SC was something that changed, that did wonders for me. I actually improved my accuracy from 50% to 90% after completing the modules in the SC course. Hmm. And uh, I think the meaning-based approach was the change in approach that I was looking for. Earlier, I was looking for splits, the grammar issues, which is something that would actually help you to score... uh, help you to be accurate in the medium difficulty level True. questions but at the same time if you want to solve 700 plus questions you need to have a different approach i usually ended up selecting uh, when there were two grammatically cor- correct choices i usually ended up selecting the concise choice hmm. but at the same time that choice used to change the meaning of the sentence and i got the answers incorrect hmm. got it got it i think that's very, very true. A lot of people say that, you know, splits work for easier questions and they do. There's no doubt about that. But if you want a foolproof method to kind of make sure that you know and can solve any question on the GMAT, because they're very ambiguous questions in the beginning for SC, right? So you don't really know what to do at that point. So I absolutely agree with you. Now, uh, you've you've done the verbal course as well. Uh, but you did the quant course and that's not what, why you bought the course, but tell me if there's real value there and, and what you learned from it possibly. Yeah. So quant, I feel is very comprehensive when it comes to the EGMAT course, because it actually touches on a lot of things that usually don't end up getting tested on the exam but it prepares you for each and every question type Hmm. and i think the algebra and geometry portions are amazing the variety of questions the diversity of questions is something that actually prepares someone for the for any question during the test date i mean there is absolutely no doubt and the scholarium insights that you get through the quant modules and you actually get a targeted practice towards the questions that you get incorrect. You see like the number of properties I'm struggling on the hard course, hard right. questions. I go back to the modules that I was struggling in. I revisited those modules, revisit the PDF summaries of those modules. And you sort of see an improvement right after revising, right after reading the whole module. Hmm. That is something that really worked for me. And I feel such complex topics like inequalities, permutations and combinations, probability, which I used to be clueless in, uh, the course actually helped me a lot. And it actually turned into one of my strengths, especially the permutations and combinations questions. Got it. Got it. So now that uh, you did the course, in fact, you were doing really well in the course. Your account stats are amazing. Um, you decided, okay, let's go ahead with the GMAT. And that's that's where I came in for the last mile uh, program. So let's talk about the first part of the last mile program uh, where you were doing well. The goal was to make sure that, you know, we get you across the line. What was it about? What was the plan like? Yeah. So I remember you first reached out to me after the first two mocks that I had attempted. And mm-hmm. I had scored decently well. Like I scored a 750 and a 770. Yeah. However, my quant was not up to the mark in the first attempt. I scored yeah. a 244. And that's where you came in. You analyzed the mocks. We had a call. You analyzed the mocks. You brought about the single most important thing that was hindering me to crossing the Q48 mark. And that was a time management issue. I used to spend a lot of time on questions that I was not able to solve correctly. And I usually ended up guessing the last four or five questions, which actually... That brings down your quant score. If you don't finish the section well, it brings down your quant score. And those were questions that I could have gotten correct had I spent one or one and a half minutes more. But I used to spend like 30 or 45 seconds in the last five questions. Hmm. Ended up 
not improving the score at all right got it yeah. so i think that was very important we figured out a listen you need to finish the test time we did that but then your accuracy dropped a little as well how do we kind of fix that yeah so the accuracy dropped for sure but you pointed out the cementing quizzes that i need to take you pointed out to maintain an error log which i did i did that some that was something that really helped me a lot because error log actually tells you about the questions that you're getting incorrect sometimes mm-hmm. when you don't maintain error log you sort of forget the type of questions that yeah. you're getting incorrect you don't remember all the concepts that you were struggling in if you got eight questions incorrect and you're not maintaining an error log you might remember four of them but you're going to re- forget a, the rest four true which the error log actually held me in you know having a comprehensive question bank of questions that i attempted incorrectly hmm. and i maintained those error logs i used to share those error logs with you you also told me what you can see the pattern you can see and then you asked me to revisit the modules that i was weak in especially the algebra and geometry hmm. and i redid those modules again so, i mean it was sort of a really comprehensive practice which actually provided me the confidence to do well in the exam right right and i think uh, creating a quant error log is quite difficult and you did a fairly good job at it you know just making sure that you note down all the points and we've released a new one so that would have really helped now we did everything right you were scoring well on quant as well what happened on the test so three days before the exam i took my last mock uh, that was a four sigma x mock and i scored a 680 and my quant dropped down to 46 Hmm. I thought I overcompensated on the time management issue, not hmm. focusing enough in the first eight questions, solving them in the first twelve minutes. Up getting four incorrect, I guess. Yeah. I don't remember that correctly, but yeah, I ended up getting four incorrect, and I was shocked, and I lost all my confidence. I thought that uh, I don't know what I have done. I might not be able to do that again. And given my experience in the past with the exam, doing well in the mocks, and then. not yeah. wearing that well it actually led to a lot of anxiety and it got the better of me yeah. i ended up scoring a 690 even though you tried to calm me down after the <laughs> attempt uh, it doesn't work that way i mean there might be a lot of people who might be motivating you but at right. the same time if there is anxiety right. within yourself it keeps on growing and hmm. i ended up with a q45 on the test which was again a shocker because i was performing decently well yeah. i was getting a q48 q49 in mocks as well got it so and that, that was happened. that was a big shock for me too happened. like i mean i was yeah. like wait hang on what happened here usually <laughs> exactly. what what i see is that you know it's normal 680 after you do well a few times is okay you need to kind of figure out why you went wrong and i rather have you get a 680 on a mock than on the test but i think yeah. you kind of got a little bit in your own head there and uh, the one thing that i knew when you scored a 619 of course you were you were ready to like give up and like you know i'm done with this and yeah. i just felt that your account stats your work with me your diligence all showed me one thing success right that's how i can predict success now i said this guy will be successful as long as he just takes the exam again i didn't even say study for it i said just take it again so what happened after that So I remember right after I left the test center, I mailed you about the score, and not once did I feel that you were disappointed in me. You were like, "Do you have it in you for a reattempt?" You were the first person who brought the thought. I was like, "I'm mentally tired. I don't know. I might think about it." But then I went home. I took a two-day break, and then I was like, "Is someone who has so much experience is asking me to take the test again? There must be a reason. I mean, yeah. he has nothing to do with it." it's all for my benefit exactly. i have nothing to lose i have a i have i have a decent score i have a 690 which is good enough to get into some good programs across the world hmm. but i would rather have a 720 plus on the gmat than a 690 so i i went for it again i was like let's do it one last time i have nothing to lose if i score less than 690 i'm going to cancel the score anyway yeah but there is a possibility that i might end up scoring a 730 740 and after i got the esr i shared the esr with you hmm. it, it. It, it was quite a shocker of an esr because there was 
no such pattern in the quant section i saw i've got yeah. everything in correct <laughs> there were in fact algebra and geometry i did better i scored a 67 yeah. 68 percentiles but at number properties and word problems which were my strong topics yeah. i got a 50 percent accuracy in both of them and that happens so, right i mean that's when i said that listen this there is no necessary explanation for what has happened here and yeah. let's just focus on again you know the plan that i shared with you the last mile plan that i shared with you and again that's something that i just come up with i think one and a half two months ago where i figured out what are the exact things you need to do before the test so talk a little bit about that as well so that you know everybody watching can also try and you know get that yeah so you know the first thing that you asked me to do was a number property reading the number properties and the word problem yeah yeah i did that and then after that you shared a very specific plan which included three stages one was the stress testing then was the pace testing and last was the revision testing so it's all about fixing the time management issues it's all about focusing on the things that you're not getting right and at the same time working working on your weaknesses and that was what the revision testing day yeah. was for which is something that really helped me i maintained the error log in the pace setting and the stress testing cementing and custom quizzes that i took mm. i used the that error log for the whole of the revision day i mm. used to revise those topics i used to revise the pdfs of the modules that i was weak in every day and you now this sort of became a practice in the last 15 days where every third day i was revising all the questions that i got incorrect in the past two days yeah and i took the last mock a week before the exam and I scored decently well and that's yeah. the base for my final week of preparation got it i think uh, and, and this is for your next attempt in the lm program i think i shared the plan with you and this is where diligence and success come through right i don't have to follow up with you on what you've done you're already doing it and i know that and i kind of knew that and i must tell everybody here that you were diligent enough to follow every little thing there i didn't have to ask you i didn't have to you know hand hold you for anything specifically and of course the rest is history and you scored a 730 i think that was that was a very big moment for me because when when i have faith in something that you know this guy will become successful it it's like putting your money down on someone right that this is i'm going all in here and it's it's something that uh, i think a lot of people should do you got to trust and and have faith in people to kind of uh, them performing to their abilities and you've done wonders uh, so once again congratulations uh, i'm so so proud of uh, having worked with you and all the best for your b school applications thank you so much and i just want to say thank you really so much because you were the one who took the onus onto yourself in deciding what i have to do which is <laughs> yeah. something that a lot of test takers struggle with they spend more time in deciding what to do than rather than doing it and, yeah and that was something that was taken away from me i was like i'm just going to trust this guy i'm just going to do whatever he says because he knows he has everything he needs to make me perform better so yeah really thank you so much and it was only because of you that i went for the i went for the fourth attempt I know yeah, yeah I know yeah. I really appreciate it and I think your trust in me really I think gives me more confidence to be able to do this with others as well so thank you so much and merry christmas again yeah merry christmas thank you